Are you still using layer masks for all your designs in Photoshop? What if I told you there's a better, faster way? Today, I'm going to show you how knockout layers can transform your workflow. What a knockout layer does is visually punches through any layers that you want it to, to reveal what's beneath. And it does this non-destructively, so it doesn't change any of the layers or punch any holes like a regular mask would do. Sometimes it's quicker and more efficient to use knockout layers instead of regular layers. So let's take a look at using knockout layers in Photoshop. I'm going to demonstrate how to use knockout layers by using this Instagram story template that I'm creating. I'll show you how to create this entire thing without using a single layer mask. So I've already started on this. I've got three layers. I've got my dog on the background layer. I've already created a couple solid adjustment layers, a pink and a beige. Now let's say I want to create a layer mask on my beige layer so that it punches through to reveal the pink. So all you do on a regular layer mask is with a black brush, you just brush and it reveals the layer below. With that same black brush, I'm going to just freehand a basic heart shape using a regular layer mask. And then I'll use this to demonstrate some of the limitations of a regular layer mask and how sometimes it's just much easier, quicker, more efficient to use a knockout layer instead. Now I've punched a hole through the beige to reveal the pink. So now I've got a pink heart. Now that's great, but there are a few limitations to regular layer masks. One is it's permanent, which also means less flexibility. The mask permanently alters this beige layer, meaning any changes require manually re-editing or recreating the masks. So for example, if I wanted to change the size or location of this mask, I would have to go in and manually recreate it. And this beige layer has, like I said, been permanently altered. It's no longer just a solid beige layer. Now it's a beige layer with a heart-shaped hole in it. Another limitation of normal layer masks is they don't allow for dynamic layering. What I mean by that is you can only cut through one layer at a time. So if for some reason I also wanted to cut through this pink layer, I would have to get rid of this layer mask and then you can click Alt and drag this down. But what if I have several layers that I want the same mask on? You would have to copy and paste that mask onto every single layer that you want it on which is not super efficient. Now I'll show you a different alternative. I'm gonna do the same thing and create a heart on top. I could just freehand it again, but this time I'm gonna use the shape tool, which you can access down here. Then you can click the drop down arrow to choose whatever shape you want. I've chosen this heart shape. So I'll just click and drag and there it is on its own layer. Now this is acting just like any other layer, but what I want it to behave like is a layer mask. To do that, I'm going to set it to become what's called a knockout layer. So I'll double click on the layer itself and right here are the knockout options. Your options are shallow or deep. For now, I'll choose deep and I'll explain what these mean later. Now you'll notice nothing happened. That's because with knockout layers, you need to turn the fill opacity all the way down. So what happened is my heart shape layer essentially behaved as if it were knocking through both the beige and the pink layers all the way to my background. Now I say essentially knocking through because as you can see, there are no masks. It didn't punch any heart shaped holes in anything. The beige layer remains intact. The pink layer remains intact. But this knockout layer, the heart-shaped knockout layer, dynamically revealed my background layer all the way at the bottom without permanently modifying anything. So now I've created a separate layer that behaves more like a mask than a layer. Again, this is called a knockout layer. But you might be wondering, why did it knock out that heart shape all the way to the background? What if I only wanted it to knock out to reveal the pink instead? You can easily control that. So I'm going to double click in here. And remember when I chose deep? The deep setting will knock out all the layers all the way down to the background. I can tell Photoshop to stop at a certain layer simply by choosing the shallow setting instead. Now, nothing has happened yet. All choosing shallow does is tell Photoshop that now you're ready to tell it where to stop. So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to group my heart layer with the layer below that I want it to punch through. So I'm going to select them, Control G to group. And now when you group the layers, your knockout layer will punch through the lowest layer in that group. So it's punching through my beige layer to reveal the pink. Another way you could do this if you didn't want to group your layers for whatever reason is 
I can just click on my heart, hold down the Alt key and create a clipping mask to connect it to the layer below that I want it to punch through. If you choose to do it this way, there's one more step. I have to double click on my beige now and make sure that blend clipped layers as group is not selected. Again, my beige and pink layers are completely unaffected. They don't have a heart-shaped hole punched through them. They're completely intact, so I can still use both of these original masks. And so here's another huge benefit to knockout layers. You can have more than one layer mask working on the same layer. I already have a non-destructive heart-shaped mask on my beige layer, but now I'm also free to use the original masks in any way that I want. So let's say again on the beige layer, I also want to create a gradient. I can do that using the original layer mask. So now it's as if I have two masks on that one beige layer, the non-destructive heart-shaped mask and a gradient mask. If I had my heart layer set to deep, I have the ability to punch through multiple layers all at once. I can change this in any way I want. I can resize, I can flip it around. And since this mask is on its own non-destructive layer, it's not going to permanently alter any of the other layers. So for example, if I wanted to change this mask and have it only mask off his face, I could control T and make this mask a little bit smaller as opposed to having to delete the entire mask and start over. I can just make any adjustments I need over and over again because it's on its own non-destructive layer. Before I show you the next big benefit of knockout layers, I'm going to go ahead and reset my current heart knockout layer to shallow instead of deep because I want it to knock through the beige layer and reveal the pink again. So again, I'm just going to, now I could just group those two layers, but instead I'm going to use the other method of creating the clipping mask. And then remember, whenever you use that method, you also have to uncheck blend clipped layers as group on the bottom layer. Okay, so there's my pink heart. Now here comes the next thing. You can do this with text as well. So I'm gonna write the dog's name up here on the top. And I want this to be, instead of just regular live text, I want it to be a mask. So again, I'm just going to double click on the layer and I'm going to change this to a knockout layer and choose shallow again. And remember, when you're working with knockout layers, you always have to turn the fill opacity all the way down. So even though I've chosen shallow, the default is it's always going to punch through all of the layers all the way to the background. So this is actually the sky you're seeing. With shallow, you have to tell it where to stop. So since I want it to punch through this beige layer and stop again at the pink, I'm just going to join it up with these two layers that are doing the same thing with that same clipping mask. So now both of my knockout layers, the text and the heart, are punching through the beige and stopping at the pink. Now I'm gonna show you something else about using live text as a knockout layer. I'm going to create another text layer down on the bottom. Same thing, I want it to be pink. So I'm gonna write happy birthday and I want this to be a mask as well. So again, I'm going to choose shallow, turn the fill opacity all the way down, and the default is it's going to punch all the way through so you can see the dog's fur in the background but i don't want that oh look i spelled birthday wrong i need to fix that there that looks better now i simply need to tell photoshop where i want this to stop i want to group it with these layers that are stopping at the pink so again i'm just going to create a clipping mask and clip it to those two layers and now it's stopping at the pink okay so we can't see that, right? It's the same color as the heart, so it's really difficult to see. Well, you can treat this just like a regular text layer, even though it's also behaving as a mask. So I can come in here, double click on my layer, and this brings up my blending options. So I can create a stroke, uh, bevel and emboss, all of the things that you would normally do, maybe with a text layer. So I'm just gonna play with this until it looks good. I won't spend too much time on this, but I just want to show you that you can still edit these in any way that you choose. I'll just leave it like that. You can see it. And I want to create the same effect on his name. So I'm just going to hold down my Alt key and drag that same effect down to his name. So you can still treat these text layers as text layers, but again, since they're knockout layers, they're actually knocking through and behaving as a layer mask.
I can tell the mask to punch all the way through to the background to reveal the dog if I want to. So to do that, I could either double click on my layer and choose deep instead of shallow, or I could just release this clipping mask. Right click and release clipping mask. So from there, I can make any changes or adjustments I want. I can move it, I can increase the size and reveal my background layer through this text mask. I'm gonna change it back to what it was and I'm also gonna change his name to Maggie because I noticed I've been using pink, so he's gotta be a girl, right? So now we've got a live text layer that's also behaving as a mask, so that's a nice two for one. Now let's finish this up, but I'm also gonna tell you another difference between regular masks and knockout masks. So obviously we want to see the dog. So I'm just going to create another shape. And this time I've chosen the rounded square. You can also find these if you click on windows, go to shapes, and then you can just search for what you want. So I've chosen this and I'll just click and drag where I think I want this to be. Now it's filled with white. This could be filled with any color as long as it's filled and I'll tell you why. First, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a knockout layer and I'm gonna choose deep and turn down my fill opacity. So now we can see the dog. Now the reason this could be any color at all is because one difference between a regular mask and a knockout mask is regular masks look for black and white. Knockout masks look for opacity opaque and transparent. So basically anything that's filled in on a knockout mask is going to be the mask. So in this case, I've got a rectangle shape filled in. That's my mask. I've set it to deep, so it's going to go all the way through. Now again, I can resize this, do anything I want to it. It's completely non-destructive. All right, I'm going to finish this off with one final frame. And by the way, you could do this freehand. I'm just using shapes because it's easier and it looks neater. So I'm going to use the rectangle shape. And again, I'm just going to click and drag, let go. This time, I don't want any fill. I do want a stroke. Stroke is the part that outlines the outside edge. So I'm going to choose white for that and then just increase the pixel size so I can actually see it. This time I'm not going to create a knockout layer out of it because I want it to be on top. I don't want it to expose any other layers, but I definitely could if I wanted to. One more final touch. I'm going to double click on my heart shape because I want to add an outline. Remember that is what stroke means. I want it to be white. And I'll change the size here just so that heart stands out a little bit more. I'm going to do the same thing to the text. So I'm going to come down to my happy birthday text. And with stroke, I'm going to change that color to white. I think that'll stand out better than the red. Click OK. Increase the size a little bit. And that looks better. And then one more shape since I'm loving the shapes today. There's also a dog print shape in your shapes, custom shapes tool. So I'm going to fill it with the same pink color that we've been using. And then I have a white outline or stroke, but I'm going to make that a lot smaller. So something like that looks good. No need to create a knockout layer out of that since I want it to be on the top.